Welcome to this episode of Sykes Now Learning Hub, Introduction to LCMS Series. In this episode, we will talk about mass spectra. Mass spectral data can be displayed in different ways, depending on which aspect you want to view. We distinguish between the mass spectrum, the total ion chromatogram, extracted ion chromatogram, and the base peak chromatogram. Next, let's see what information you can get from mass spectra. A mass spectrum is a two-dimensional representation of the ion signals recorded by the detector. On the x-axis, you can see the mass to charge ratio or m over c. On the y-axis, the signal intensity is displayed. One mass spectrum is the result of one recording event called scan in a mass spectrometer. When comparing the same type of molecule, signal intensity can provide quantitative information. The highest peak in a spectrum is called the base peak. Very small and unmeaningful data is called noise. If we take a closer look at the signal of a single ion, we realize that it consists of a group of peaks and not one peak. These are isotopic peaks of the compound that follow the distribution of the natural isotopes of elements. The isotope pattern of a compound is mainly characterized by its carbon atoms. 98.89% of carbon atoms have a mass of exactly 12 Daltons, but in nature, 1.11% of carbon atoms have an extra neutron, making their total mass 13 Daltons. In this example, the monoisotopic mass is represented by those molecules that only contain carbon-12 atoms. The second isotope peak of this analyte is formed by the molecules that contain one carbon-13 atom. The next signal is formed by those having two carbon-13 atoms, and so on. This makes a mass difference of approximately one Dalton between the isotopes of a compound. You can get valuable information from the isotope pattern of a signal. For example, you can see which charge state the analyte has when reviewing the distances of signals within its isotope pattern. The distance between the signals is approximately 1 over Z. That is, for singly charged ions, the distance is about 1 Dalton, and for doubly charged ions, 0.5 Dalton. Since some elements have a distinct isotope pattern, you can also conclude what the elemental composition of an analyte is. For example, if you see that the third isotope is higher than the second one, the compound contains chlorine or bromine. Although most molecular ions are stable in the gas phase, you can make them fragment within the mass spectrometer, a process called collision-induced dissociation or CID. Fragmentation occurs at specific bonds within a molecule and the resulting fragments are a characteristic feature of this compound. So by analyzing the fragments of a specific molecular ion, we can conclude which molecule was in the sample. The result of a CID experiment is the MSMS -MS spectrum. To understand this data type, it is important to know that many mass spectrometers are capable of selecting specific ions called precursor ions, fragmenting them, and detecting the resulting fragment ions. Because the fragmentation occurs at dedicated molecular bonds, the fragment spectrum can distinguish different molecules, even though they have the same precursor mass, as shown in this example. As with any mass spectrum, the M over C values of the fragment ions are shown on the x-axis and their intensity is displayed on the y-axis. The technique of fragmenting ions in a mass spectrometer and the corresponding mass spectra are sometimes referred to as MSMS, -MS, tandem MS or MS to the two. The precursor ion can also be named the parent ion and the fragment ions are sometimes called daughter ions. Note that different fragment ions can be observed for the same molecule depending on which instrumental setup is used, as shown in this example. Please refer to other training courses in the Sciex Now Learning Hub. Thank you for watching this episode. To view the full training course, including progress checks and a final quiz to earn a certificate, go to Sciex.com. Log in today to take advantage of the highly rated training material offered in the Sciex Now Learning Hub. You can use the links below.